Hey everyone, I'm Jay Stu. I'm from the We Got the Geek podcast, and uh, extremely excited to have with us Mr. Matt Orak. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, you, know, you were you were drawing uh, Spider-Man De- uh, Deadpool. Mm-hmm. We were speaking down uh, downstairs late uh, earlier. Mm-hmm. You're a big fan of Easter eggs in homage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you were telling me you had a great time drawing some of them in the in the comics. What were some of your favorites to put in there? Um, well, man, I don't know. There's so <laughs> many of them. I would always put the Griffin in and all these these obscure characters I really like and and uh, put some of my friends in some of the pages. Ramon Villalobos, uh, artist, and uh, Donny Cates, the writer, I put in, a, in in some pages and and there was a scene where in Punisher where some uh, would-be uh, sexual assaulters get stopped by the Punisher and one of them ends up getting shot in the crotch so I drew those two guys as the same would-be assaulters from Robocop who ended up getting shot in the crotch <laughs> so that was a fun one and then I put Major X into a page of Spider-Man you, Deadpool 50 you were saying they got you in trouble with Rob Liefeld yeah a little bit what happened there well I had I was drawing this page where all these characters are falling to their death and it's kind of um, outside of continuity so I was allowed to use whatever character I wanted and so I put Major X in there because they had announced that he was coming out and it was Rob's new character so I just put him in a little tiny drawing of him falling to his death little did I know that that issue Spider-Man Deadpool 47 would would hit stores the week before Major X number one (laughs) And then so all the speculators and retailers start reaching out to me saying, hey, what's the story with this? Is this his first appearance? I was like, I don't know. Like, if you say it is, I don't know. Well, you know, that's not really my decision. Yeah. And so it started saying that to Rob. And then Rob went on Twitter and said, you know, I will never sign a copy of Spider-Man Deadpool 47. That is not the true first appearance of Major X. <laughs> And I anticipated a clown move like this, and I responded and said, hey, I wasn't trying to clown. I just thought it would be cool to put him in there. <laughs> and I didn't know when it would hit the stores, but he didn't respond. So. Oh, man. Yeah. And your, your first job was with him as well, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I drew the Covenant from Image, which was a sword and sorcery Old Testament story. <laughs> Bizarrely enough, it's a real thing that happened. Yeah, so he gave me my first job, and then... <laughs> Oh, man. <clears throat> but even on that job, when I got that job, you know, I knew Rob's reputation and, and knew that there was a decent chance I would get burned on it somehow. But he ended up firing the colorist partway through. So I was like, Whoosh. Oh, there you go. He took the bullet for nice. me. <laughs> yeah. <Nice. laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, whatever. Rob, Rob's Rob. No, that's good. I'm, 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 not, I'm not mad at it. And if he's mad at me, whatever. Say lovey. Yeah. No. What can you do, right? Well, I could create my own character called Rojam Z, which is just a Z on his helmet instead of an X. And nice. Major backwards. <laughs> but I decided not to, to uh, go aggressive like that. Were you a fan of those characters before working on them in the book? Spider-Man, Spider-Man and Deadpool? Deadpool? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I loved Spider-Man since I was a kid, obviously. And um, I liked Deadpool fine. You know, I wasn't a huge fan of him. But I became more of a fan of Deadpool once I started drawing him because... <clears throat> When Deadpool, uh, Looney Tunes rules apply all the time. Yeah. So no idea is too stupid for, for Deadpool. So it's really freeing, and you can just do a lot of the fun stuff that I think makes comics fun in the first place. You don't have to take it too seriously, and you can, you can I mean, you can, you can kill him. You can do anything to him, and, and he'll just bounce right back and make a joke about it. So, yeah, I, I really got more of an affinity for Deadpool after working on it. That's cool. And who are some of your influences starting out? Um, when I was y- super, super young, <clears throat> there was a, there's an artist called uh, Ed Emberley, these drawing books, Ed Emberley's drawing books, a big purple drawing book, an orange drawing book, Make a World, and they're for kids, and they're very basic, like line, dot, circle, triangle, and it builds, you can, it gives you like step by step how to build all these different things, draw all these different things using that, so that's one of the first things that, that got me into drawing and made me realize like stylizing something like representing something on on paper that exists in the world and then Tintin comics was another big early influence and then as I got older and got more into comics my big three guys were Mike Mignola, Art Adams and Michael Golden oh, nice. and then like 
thousands of other people. Like John McRae that was just sitting in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who I've been sitting next to all weekend, which is awesome. Oh, well. Do you like doing these cons, actually? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one of the, the coolest things about comics is you can, if there's an artist or a writer that you're a fan of, you can probably go meet them. I mean, a lot of them do shows and, and a lot of them are super accessible and you can stand and talk to them for an hour if you want and yeah. show them your work and, you know, get feedback and all that stuff. And, and, and I like doing that likewise from the other side of the table now and, and, and doing commissions and meeting people that are fans. And, you know, sometimes <clears throat> it's, it's a very solitary life drawing comics. You're sitting in a room by yourself. So for one, it's nice to get out and be around other, other professionals, but it's also nice to have someone bring the books to your table. I'm like, oh, someone is actually reading this. It's, I'm not just finishing it and it's just out there and and, and, it, and, and it's done. Cool. Uh, any rituals when you draw? Do you like to listen to any music or anything? Uh, like I listen that? to music, I listen to podcasts, I listen, to, I, I watch, um, I watch stuff in the background. It's gotta be something I've seen before. Cause yeah. If I've, I haven't seen it, I'll start watching it and not work. But I did a, I did a chronological Coen Brothers rewatch okay but not by the t it, not by chronologically when they came out but chronologically when they're set oh, okay. you know, like starting with i forget what the first one is i want to say oh brother where art thou might be the first one yeah. and that was interesting and i'll do like a star wars rewatch or i'll do and i want like the most maligned Avengers movie, Age of Ultron, is like right. one of my favorites now for some reason. I just would have it on in the background so many times and take a break to watch the Hulkbuster fight and then oh, very cool. <laughs> go back to it. So, I mean, that's it. And um, unfortunately, I need, I should maybe find a set ritual because often I'll be like, oh, I'm going to go have a cigarette. Oh, I'm going to go eat some food. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go do this. Oh, I got to respond to that email and, and just putting off, putting off, putting off working. And then having to pull all nighters at the end of the deadline, so should get a better ritual, probably. <laughs> uh, does anyone have any questions here? Mm hmm. Besides Spider-Man, Deadpool, what other uh, what other sort of uh, I drew The Punisher for a while when Becky Cloonan was writing it. Uh, right, uh, Steve Dillon passed away and I, that was my first Marvel gig was was working on that that's a fun story I should tell that story sure. I was out to dinner for my uh, for my anniversary and I got a, an email at dinner it said Marvel gig ASAP and I was like oh my god you know because I, I had been I had a relationship with them and, and kind of knew they were maybe gonna give me something at some point so I got that email and it said Steve Dillon's sick he's falling behind on the deadline we'd like you to fill in on the Punisher. So I was like, oh, it's all excited and, you know, went home that night and then I woke up the next day and saw that he had passed away. And so I've heard back from them and uh, they said, just sit tight for a minute. We're going to figure out what we're doing. And then uh, eventually they said, yeah, let's, we're going to go ahead and they, you know, what are you going to do, cancel the book? You know, they just got to keep, keep on. And I, I would imagine he would have wanted that too. But it was it was a weird situation. I guess that's not really a fun story, no, is it? No. Um, actually, I'm a big fan of Becky Cloonan's work. What was it like right, doing that book with her? Oh, she's she's awesome. I uh, we didn't have a ton of interaction while we were working on it. She was super busy, so we didn't. You know, I would just get the scripts and work on them, and and uh, you know, a little emailing here and there. But there's a convention in in uh, California that was called Idiot Fest two years ago. ID 10 T Fest, and then last year was called Big Adventure. <clears throat> and it's outdoors, and there's bands, and comedians, and DJs, and stuff. And then there's like an artist alley, a comic convention connected to it. And it's the artist that's kind of run by Lee Lowridge, the colorist who colored some of the Punisher stuff, and is friends with Becky as well. So Becky goes to that show, and I've gone to that show. So I've got to hang out with her a bunch at that show and and she's great she's awesome i'd love to do something else with her sometime yeah met her one day she made my kids day like oh yeah books for her yeah everything. yeah yeah she's awesome she's really great her and her her dude mike conrad who i also met oh i i, I uh easter egged michael conrad and oh, cool. his brother and some of those guys because there was a there's a scene that asked for some dirt bags hanging out under a bridge and i was like i know some <laughs> dirt bags i can put in there yeah Nice. Uh, any characters you'd love to get a crack at? 
Hmm. I don't know. People ask me this all the time. I, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, my the characters I like are like Griffin or Bug or you know these weirdo obscure characters that I don't know why anyone would <laughs> would launch a title with them. But I would love to do some X Men stuff. I did a little bit just recently some fill in stuff for an X Men title. So. I'd love to do some X-Men stuff because I loved X-Men growing up. And Star Wars. I'd love to do something with Star Wars because oh, cool. Star Wars, yeah. That's probably the two main ones that I would really, really push. But I, you know, it, it, I would more likely go by the, the collaborators and stuff like that and, and what the story is, you know. I'm not super into characters as a, as a, as a rule or whatever, you know what I mean? I'm not, I don't really have a favorite guy. Although I do collect toys so I've been collect like I've been picking one character from each line to, to to collect so maybe those are my guys Punisher's one of them oh, okay Destro from the from GI Joe mm -hmm. Bosk from Star Wars cool. Grimlock from the Transformers although I don't think I want to draw Transformers there's too much too much uh, reference and getting the, the, the robots to look right yeah although you maybe you get used to it after a little while Who knows? yeah uh, you mentioned collaborators. Uh, mm -hmm. Any collaborators you you love to work with? Oh man, I mean more than I can list. <laughs> um, but you know, like Donnie, I'd love to do something with Donnie again. Donnie Cates, because we did. I knew him years ago. We did a little strip called Space Stepdad that ran in the back of the Paybacks. It's one of his older books, and that was super fun. It was fun working with him, and he's got so much enthusiasm and stuff. Plus, he's. He's the hot it boy, so that wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to, to work with him again. So, yeah, I'd love to work with, with Donnie again. Um, I mean, Warren Ellis, of course, you know, guys like that would be really cool. I did a, I also live in, a, uh, I live in Akron, Ohio, and, and near Akron is Kent, Ohio, and P. Craig Russell is from Kent, Ohio. So I got to collaborate with him on a couple things, which was really amazing. So there's, there's a bunch of, you know, like, I don't know that what scenario I would get to work with Mike Mignola or Art Adams or something like that, but that would be that would be mind blowing. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, maybe a, one of those. You know, Marvel does things every once in a while where each page is drawn by a different artist or something. To be in a book like that with some of those guys, the heavy That's hitters, cool. would be super cool. Definitely. Not very nice. Yeah. Uh, how many hours uh, did you spend? Too many. <laughs> I've 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 kind of come to realize, uh, any given page takes about twelve hours, eight to twelve hours, per page, from start to finish. I've done a page in as short as four hours, but that those are few and far between. More often, I'm probably spending more like eighteen hours on pages because I, I have a hard time, hacking it out. You know, just just do it and get it done, and it's fine. Which is probably to my detriment because even if I did that, most times, you know, I show it to people and they're like, "This is great." Like, oh, don't you see that? That was wrong. And they're like, "Nope." So I'm putting <laughs> way more work into it than I than I need to. But it's it's just, it's a very labor intensive labor intensive job. And I've thought about trying to switch my style up a little bit to a looser style that I it's not so meticulous in the inking because that can really take a long time. But you know, sometimes it just comes out, and then other times just bang my head against a page for days you know so but yeah I'd say 8 to 12 hours is, is average per, per page it's my daughter back there <laughs> yes hi <laughs> hi Adi you don't have a question no okay <laughs> your daughter's on your Instagram yes I know. she's actually in Spider-Man Deadpool 50 as well because we did a fumetti page, which is like the Italian style uh, photo comics. So each 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 uh, collaborator on the book had their own panel, and so I had I staged one where she's sitting at my drawing table with a page in front of her and a pencil, and I'm sitting back with a mug with my feet up, and I put printed out some of my pages and like marked them up and wrote like wrong, do better, <laughs> this is bad. And so it looks like I make her draw all my books. So she got to be in the comic book. That was book. great, actually. Yeah. Spire and Deadpool 50, if, if you guys haven't read it, you should pick it up because it's super fun. We did a bunch of, there's two artists on the book, Jim Toe and I, and we each drew half of it. It was a double-sized issue, so we each drew 15 pages. And my 15 pages were all 
either fake covers or double page spreads to fake tie-ins to the fake crossover that we were doing in that book. So I got to do all these made up stories like uh, Spider Ham and Egg Pool. Oh, that was great. Yeah. And Next Force, which is a combination of Next Wave and X Force with all the extreme sports characters Silver <laughs> Surfer, Screwball, um, Night Thrasher, uh, Adam X the Extreme, even though he's not, he's just extreme. And then I made up a new Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider X, the motocross Ghost Rider, which only appears on that page and will probably be forgotten forever, but it's still fun. I got to do it. And don't be a cosplayer to make something. Oh, I hope so. Great. One cool thing is I was telling, I was at Chicago C2E2 and I was telling Jason Aaron, I'd love to work with Jason Aaron too. Um, I was telling Jason Aaron about that and I told him about the Moto X, the, the Ghost Rider X. He's like, that's a good idea. I was like, yeah. Oh, that makes it all worth it. Jason thing. He wrote some great Ghost Rider stories, too. So, yeah. Yes. Is there any character that you created that you can transform into something else, something better? Uh, making your own little design or a little comic book series off of Yeah, I have a few creator own things that I'm, you know, sitting on that I would love to do something with. But there's a few characters I got to help create in, in Marvel that I would love to do more with. There's one character, well, I didn't I sort of create him. There was a character named Face in The Punisher, and he was taking this super soldier serum, like super meth. And it was he was overdosing on it and taking too much, and he started peeling his face away, like he was picking at his face. That was what was written in the script. So I was like, ah, oh, it'd be really cool if he picked all his face away and he just had the skull showing. So basically, his face looked like the Punisher logo, and then we could call him Skull Face. And so I drew a little sketch of it and sent it in. They're like, this is great, let's do it. And then that's we ended up putting it in the book. So, but then they killed him at the end of the run. So. Not that anyone's ever dead in Marvel, but I'd, I'd yeah, which I actually threw him in Spider-Man Deadpool 50 as well. I threw him in there, but I'd, 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 th I'd be fun to do something with Skullface, especially if they made an actual Skullface title. So there was a comic that's just a Skullface on the front. I think it would be fun. <laughs> yes, dear. What? Battle Bell? Sure. She dressed up. She has a bell from Battle uh, Beauty and the Beast dress that my mom had made for her. And she wore it to a convention once and then also bought a big plastic sword. So we started calling her Battle Bell. Nice. So we might try and uh, we might try and turn that into a story. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is there anything, uh, you know, outside of spending 18 hours a day over a drawing? Yeah. <laughs> no, unfortunately, no, there's, there's not, and I've really gotten bad. I used to play baseball. We used to play pickup baseball. Me and my friends would all just meet at a park on Sundays and pick up teams and play baseball, and that was super fun, but that kind of, everybody started having kids and families and stuff, so that kind of fell apart. Um, I also work, my studio is in the build, Earthquaker Devices building. Earthquaker Devices is a guitar pedal company, like distortion pedals and effects pedals. So I do the art for, for them and, and other little things from them. So there's always that, and it's, you know, it's a fairly creative workplace, even though it's, it's a factory. I guess we can have Yeah, so, so yeah, I'm not just, yeah, I'm not just doing the same thing every time and going into a room by myself. Yeah, there's always people awesome. around, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, and then just, I don't know, it, it's, 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 I, I think I need to learn, like the ritual thing you're saying, I, I need to learn better work habits and, and, and knowing when <clears throat> to take a day off and, and let myself recharge instead of like, you know, getting myself behind the eight ball and then having to pull three all nighters in a row after I've already been working for six days in a row and just having nothing left and I'm sitting there at the drawing table and every ounce of my body is screaming get up go outside <laughs> stop drawing but you can't so yeah it's tough yes um, what did you study and how you been doing all these? Uh, I did go to art school after high school but I went to Cleveland Institute of Art which is a capital A art school you know like pinky in the air art school 
And this was in 93, so they did not like comics at the time. Now there's a lot more schools that have comics programs. So it was probably, probably not the best place for me. And I ended up being on a disciplinary and academic probation by the end of that first year. <laughs> so uh, I ended up going to University of Akron and taking art school there, going to art school there. And I, once I got into a drawing major, it was basically, I just made comics, brought them to class and got critiques. But the main thing was going to conventions and showing my stuff to artists and getting any any input I could any and like you know back the, it's a lot easier now with the internet you can find YouTube channels where people talk about it and you, you obviously you want to try and find somebody who seems like they know what they're talking about but there's a lot more information and you can see, watch a video of your favorite artist drawing and you can learn so much and see how they're making marks and why they make the decisions they make but a, a good portion of it was just my own self education going to conventions reading magazine articles where people talk about stuff and just anything I could find and I'll say this if you if you're at a convention and Brian Stelfreeze is there go ask him to to look at your portfolio because he gave me a critique that gave me a bunch of little neat little tricks and 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 good advice that that really pushed me to being able to do it um so yeah how much do you um direction from writers from the writers of the, the, the story when you yeah you draw your book. uh it depends with with punisher becky scripts like all the information was there but there wasn't an overabundance of information so i filled in a lot of it and you know i'll do my layout and send it in and then editorial or the writer will come back and say oh don't forget this you maybe do this but then on spider-man deadpool there was a lot of back and forth between Robbie and I where he would say, what do you want to draw? And then I'd say, what if we did this? And he'd say, okay, great. And then i get the script. And from for the most part, once I have the script, I'm on my own, sort of. You know what I mean? I, there's not a lot of, at least with my, my experience. And even editorial hasn't really, they just like, just get it done. And <laughs> if you get stuck or something, can you call them and ask them? Yeah. I have two options here. Which one do you want? Yeah. Is it kind of, you pick one and hope they don't hate it. Yeah. And I've also learned, because I've done some covers here and there, and I'll send in the sketches for the covers, and I'm like, well, my, my template has one extra space, so let me do one more quick one that I don't really care about and don't really want to draw. Guarantee that's the one they're picking. <laughs> so I've learned to, like, figure it out before I send it in, like, figure out what I think the best option is and what I, I think the best way to do it is and, and send them that. And for the most part, it's worked out. I've heard horror stories from people who are like, they're just like, they just keep sending it back. They keep sending it back and keep making me change things and stuff. So, but I can do that. But often I don't, maybe I should more, but sometimes I feel like, well, I need to draw this now. I can't really wait around to find out what they think i'm just going to make the decision i think is best at this point and and i've had editorial and and writers that that trust me for the most part i think i guess or they're just happy it's done don't really care what's it i i do my i do my layouts and essentially my pencils digitally on an ipad in procreate and well with a little bit of photoshop i move it back and forth from photoshop to do my panel borders and make sure if it's you know I have my templates in there so I'll do all that and then I'll print it out blue line and ink it traditionally and scan it but I have done some some digital finishes here and there when I have to or like on Spider-Man Deadpool 50 there were a couple pages that I had penciled really extensively with the thought that maybe another inker would draw them but then we ended up they just said we're just gonna we're just gonna clean these up and print these because they're they're basically done. So, I don't like it though. I don't like drawing digitally as much as on paper. Yeah, it's just more fun. It's just I don't know. These are, it's there's a lot more uh, there's a lot more tools you can do digitally, and a lot more tricks, and a lot more things that make your life easier. But that's also a trap because you're like, well, what if I flip this and re redo it this way? Oh, what if I do this? Oh, let me just scrap this entire layout <laughs> that's done and do go a different direction because I, because I can, you know, because it's so easy to resize things and move them around and all that stuff. So 
I don't know that it, you know in a way it saves me time, but at the, in other ways it, it's just the same old yeah. Go ahead. What? Every day? I'm lucky if I do one a day. But roughly 20 pages every, a 20 page issue I usually have. Theoretically I have five weeks most times, but in, inevitably you blow the first deadline and then <laughs> you've lost a week going into the next <laughs> one and then so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, I, I can basically do a 20 page book in, in well, I can do it in two and a half weeks, which is what the worst I've had to do is. Oh, wow. Yeah. And like I said, I can't hack it out. I just can't make myself do it. <laughs> so it's just, those are, those are rough times for sure. Wow, man. Yeah. Uh, any future projects you can tell us about? Nothing right now, specifically. I have a few different things, a couple creator owned things that are kind of milling around, trying to figure out if they're going to happen. And Marvel is figuring out what they want me to do next, so. Nothing I can say yet. Yeah. I hope it involves the spider mobile because it was great seeing that back again after all these years. <laughs> yeah, the Spidey Deadpool crossover mobile. Yeah, that was fun. I want him to make one. That's another thing. I was talking about the toys earlier. I want him to make something. I want a skull face figure or something. I got to make a character that they make a figure of sooner or later. Have you ever thought about writing a movie yourself? Yeah. Universe yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've talked to them. I maybe not so much a movie, but writing some some some. I've I, I've thought about it, and actually, at, at where my studio is, I share it with the. We have a full time videographer at at the the pedal company, so we talk about doing some stuff here and there once in a while, maybe making something, but time. Well, in that case, who plays Skullface in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your own thing put on YouTube. Yeah. Now, yeah. That sort of thing. I would, I would love to do something like that, but I don't know. Maybe I should. Yeah. It'd be Marvel to be anything you want. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well. Mm hmm. Sure. I guess. Uh, Mm -hmm. Versus knowing all of the history. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if we could talk a bit about like, um, like meetings to make sure, you know, because Marvel does care a lot about its history. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it matters. And, like, let's not just. Yeah. Like, bring it up. So is there like a, just imagine crews of people? Like, yeah. Crew, like, this brings, like, I think. Know it all? Yeah, I think for the most part, they try to have that squared away before it gets before to me. Yeah. Um, or if there's issues, you know, there's been things here or there, like, actually, mostly not until I got in trouble for the Major X thing. I guess the pretty set stone. Yeah, yeah, and I think they, and, and thankfully, both books that I worked on, Punisher and Spider-Man Deadpool, Punisher kind of was in its own thing by itself, so yeah. there wasn't a lot of that that they had to worry about besides Frank himself. And then Spider-Man Deadpool has often been sort of out of continuity or on the edges of continuity. So we had a lot more leeway. Like often, you know, I'd, you know, they'd say, who do you want to draw? And I'd say, I want to draw these people. And they're like, okay, great. And then I can draw whichever version I want. I can draw the classic costume instead of the new modern one with all the piping and all that yeah. stuff that takes forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just put some put some shoulder pads on there. So, so yeah, I've been kind of lucky with that, where I haven't gotten bogged down in that stuff, or, or constantly had to do revisions, or oh, we can't. You know, I've heard people have draw a whole issue, or have it nearly done. And they're like, bad news, we can't use that character anymore. So they have to go back through and switch out a character because of whatever, because it conf conflicts with something. So, for the most part, I would love to. I would imagine the writers have a lot more discussion on that on those levels too but i gotta start writing some stuff it's less labor intensive too read it for sure yeah. nice yes dear um 
yeah, I ink with brush pens and markers, microns. Um, not, not. I don't use the traditional tools, the dip, uh, crow quill, or regular brush. Mostly markers and stuff. Good question, honey. <laughs> I remember when we were talking about downstairs, you were mentioning the Easter eggs, and uh, mm -hmm. you put Simon Pegg in a bunch of years. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, in Punisher and in Spider-Man Deadpool, I put Simon Pegg and Nick Frost in as, as ancillary characters. In Punisher, there were two security guards, so I made them their characters from Hot Fuzz. And then uh, there's a hitchhiking scene in Spider-Man Deadpool, so I used their characters from Paul, which is the road trip movie. And I'm going to keep doing it every chance I get. <laughs> and hopefully they'll they'll see it someday, or maybe I should just tweet it at them. That's but I idea. I am slightly afraid that Marvel Legal would not like that if they realized I was doing that, right. since those are probably are copywritten characters that they can't. <laughs> but back you know back when I was younger, every, all everybody did that all the time, and mm -hmm. then people weren't so touchy about those kind of things. Or like old Mads, Will Elder Mads, where every if there's space to put a gag in, you put a gag in. So yeah. that's kind of my mentality a lot of times. But yeah, I gotta look for the next. I gotta find somewhere to put in there. Shaun of the Dead characters and yeah, end of the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Oh. Okay. Yes. Um, for you, isn't it a little bit difficult to separate like your private life and your work if you work like on the hours? Yeah. Yeah. How so do you do it? You have a wife that's forgiving. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but there's also, with that, you know, I'll be gone for three weeks or whatever, working every day, all day, but then I'll have a week or week and a half, two weeks after that where I don't have to do anything. Any, I'll, so I can go to work that week. I might only go work for, you know, three hours, four hours a day and, and then be done. So it, it does make up for it a little bit there. But, yeah, there's definitely stretches where it's tough where I'm just gone the whole time and... and just deal with it, basically. I mean, I don't know. I maybe should be more forceful and say, no, this deadline's just not going to work. I just can't do it. So, But there's always the fear if they'll be like, okay, well, then we'll have someone else do it, <laughs> you know? So, so just kind of roll with it and make the best of it if you can. But, I mean, that is... That is the 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 best side of, of working that much is that there's stretches where I don't have to work. I don't I don't have to go. I don't have eight hours any given day where I can. And and that's the other thing of working that many hours is I can go start those hours at three o'clock in the afternoon if I want to. You know what I mean? You can make your own schedule as long as you get the work done. So there's there's pluses and minuses to it definitely. Yep. What comics were you reading growing up? X Men. Official handbook in the Marvel Universe. Oh, I yeah. loved the handbook. I, I, uh, that was my favorite comic. Um, Marvel 2 and 1, Marvel Team Up were two favorites. Yeah. I think I read Transformers. I bought Transformers and G.I. Joe when they were coming out. Almost all Marvel stuff. But I also was just, at a, at a certain point, just voracious. If you had a quarter box, I was just anything that looked good. Yeah. <clears throat> I would I would buy. <clears throat> but those were probably my favorites when I was a kid. For sure. Do you still keep up with it at all? I try, but I just have to read piles that just keep growing yeah. and growing and growing. So, but I read things every once in a while. That's cool. Yeah. I read synopsises too. I'll just go read <laughs> the, the Wikipedia page. What did I miss? What happened to these guys? <laughs> so, but I wish I could read more. I wish I had time to read more comics. Yes, dear. What, like this panel? Yeah, sure. I can talk about comics all day long. <laughs> Do you like doing it? <laughs> yeah. I like almost every aspect of it. Besides the hours, besides the all-nighters occasionally. It's, it's a pretty great job. That's cool. 
And what other things do you uh, nerd out about? Toys, toys, yeah, Star Wars, movies in general, nothing too hardcore, but you know, and it's it's cool to share the office with the videographer because we can talk stories or talk about movies on a on a on a level of of figuring out why they do that, you know, what well, this was cool, I thought this was cool, I thought this was a mistake, you know, it's 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 fun to do that instead of like constantly interrupting the movie when we're watching it like that doesn't wait a minute why is that happening <laughs> so yeah but i've gotten into toys a lot lately for some reason collecting toys so it's bad bad scene nothing wrong with that yeah <laughs> tell that to my basement true <laughs> <laughs> what thousands probably well I got into a ha bad habit of going to thrift stores and buying toys to theoretically sell at some point because I kept finding cool stuff I'm like I don't want this but I don't want to leave it here for a dollar you know <laughs> so that's how my basement got oh, full wow. of full of stuff so there's a there's a potential toy store in, in our basement right now but I live in Ohio and it's 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 a pretty affordable place to live so it's pretty easy to have a, a a lot of room, which then you decide to fill with crap. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at. Has it only been like ten minutes? Yeah, Three thirty-eight. Yeah. What else? I'm trying to think. What else? What's been your favorite character to draw so far? Hmm, I like drawing Skullface that I made up. He was super fun because he was just deteriorated so I could do a little scribbly, you know, grossness. I like monsters in general. Anytime I get to draw monsters, that's that's one. Like, I would love to do something in the Mignola universe, the BPRD universe. Oh, nice. For sure. It would be super fun. Um, I'm trying to think who else I really like drawing that I got a chance to draw. Oh, the murder sharks that are in the Spider-Man They Deadpool. were awesome. They're really fun to draw. Yeah, and Bug. I got to draw Bug from the Micronauts, yeah. which was really cool. Which is one where Robbie had asked, you know, who do you want to draw? What character should we use? And I did not even remember that Bug was still a part of the Marvel Universe, you know, because the Micronauts are not yeah. part of the... They can't use them anymore, but Bug still is because he was created for the comics. So I'm reading the script, and sure enough, Bug shows up, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> he read my mind. Yeah, I, I would, yeah. Somebody should write me a bug and bug and skull face buddy cop. I would read that. <laughs> With the murder sharks. <laughs> Silk was really cool too, so I drew Silk a bunch because because yeah. she was in and, and that's she's kinda it's kind of a complicated costume, but it's a good one. So Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Did you have anything before Marvel? Were you better Marvel like well, I did the covenant with Rob, the um, sword and sorcery Old Testament Bible story. It's like hyper violent. It's like <laughs> ridiculous. It's the weirdest thing. So I did that, and I did a few. I did some pitches here and there that didn't get picked up. And I did the thing that got me the job with Rob, and like kind of started getting people to start noticing me was, and this is good advice for for drawing, trying to draw comics is. I took an episode of Thundar the Barbarian, and I transcribed it, the cartoon, I don't know if you guys know Thundar the Barbarian, I transcribed the cartoon and adapted it into a comic and made little mini comics of it and like handed those out at conventions. So people would actually like, oh, Thundar, I remember that, so they would actually look at it instead of being like, thanks, and you know, put it in the portfolio to never to be seen again. So that that's something, I don't know that you would ever be able to find one of those, but... <laughs> But I did some other little things here or there, some digital comics and stuff like that. But really, The Covenant was my first major thing. First for real in print comic book. Yeah. Just getting closer and closer. You can come sit up here. <laughs> uh, what's the weirdest thing anyone ever asked you to draw at a convention? Hmm. I don't know. I haven't had anything too weird. There was a, 
it's friends with Chris Burnham, and I, it shows when I when I was trying to get get work, I would go crash at his table and hang out at his table. And I remember once somebody had him draw Winnie the Pooh being impaled by a dolphin. I think it was. Oh, nice! And he had a bunch of them, that, like a lot of people had drawn. That's one of the weirdest things. Oh, I've heard. Yeah. Um, but mostly, I haven't gotten too too weird. With Deadpool, I often get commission requests where somebody's like, "Okay, have him doing this and saying this." You know, a lot of people want to write their own Deadpool yeah. gag for the commissions, and you know, I've done them so far. And nobody's asked me to do anything I wouldn't I wouldn't do. So, yeah, nothing too weird. I did have somebody I do ten minute uh, like quick sketches, and a guy wanted one of those. And I was like, okay, what do you want? He's like, can you draw my two sons as Spider-Man and Deadpool? <laughs> not, not in ten minutes, I can't. I'm sitting here right now. But I fudged it a little bit, you know. I drew a big big Deadpool and a small Spider-Man or, or vice versa to represent the big kid and the younger kid. So he was happy. So. Yes? So you drew Ox for your... Oh, yeah. I forgot that. It was more challenging in that I had to do more of it, but yeah, I forgot Octoskull. I did, um, which I have down, in, and if anybody who came to the panel wants a free Octoskull comic, come see my table. I'll give you one. But it's um, it, uh, a sword and like a, a barbarian fantasy space story. Uh, using the names of our guitar pedals as characters and places in in the comic, so I wrote and drew that, and 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 like pitched it to the owners of the guitar pedal company, and they're like, yeah, let's do it. And then all of a sudden, I had to write it and draw it, and like be an editor and a publisher and figure out how we're going to put out this comic because we weren't a comic company. So that was challenging, having to be an editor and stuff. But thankfully, we had a, a staff of you know graphic designers and stuff to help me out with that. But. I like writing and drawing my own stuff. They're different challenges, I guess. The the biggest challenge with the Marvel stuff is having to do it when you don't feel like it. Oh, okay. You know, when you're burnt out and been doing it for too long, but the deadlines hanging over your head. That's that's easily the hardest part, except for when they ask for a bicycle or a. <laughs> A ship or a shipyard. I had to draw a shipyard and Punisher with storage containers and cranes and shipping boats and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. I never even thought about drawing any of these things. <laughs> and now I have to make it look convincing. So that's that's one of those things about comics. It's super, super uh, challenging and, and is something you're not really ready for going in, you know, wanting to draw comics. You want to draw Spider Man or whatever. And you don't think that I got to. And the, the bear trap in Punisher. There was a bear trap. There's a scene of Punisher swinging a bear trap around his head. And so I go to draw a bear trap and did not realize bear traps are kind of really hard to draw. Because okay. they got to be, you know, they have to look like they can fold on each other. And they have these teeth that are supposed to be the same size, but they're on a circle. So they're, you know, changing in perspective, but not on a grid that you can do. I don't know. It was the hardest thing to figure out. I should have just fudged it though. And just <laughs> Teeth done. No. Yes. Now, in situations like that where mm -hmm. you never drew before, you don't know how to lay it out, is Google your friend? Google your friend Absolutely. Or is it, is it flipping through both trials? No, I don't. I started to build a morgue years ago, a morgue of, of photos, as they call it, for reference. Because I, you know, got started trying to do it before the internet was really a thing, but since then, yeah, Google, and you got to be clever. You got to be smart about your Google image searching. You got to try and type it a little different way and hit a couple filters so you're not just using the same top result that everyone uses to draw this, you know, building or whatever it is. If someone asks for something specific, but yeah, I. It, I, I, it's hard for me to work without having the computer right there with the screen up with the reference for the characters or whatever other things. Yeah, Google, use it all the time. And and then like the Ed Emberley thing I was saying before, you got to figure out how to not kill yourself 
and 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 represent this thing stylistically as simply as possible so it reads and reads as real but you're not drawing every rivet and every bolt and every whatever sure no <laughs> yeah sure come on honey it's pretty exciting you don't get this in many panels <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, see, you just want to be on stage. Get out of here. No. And sometimes, sometimes uh, you'll get the research in the, in the script. You know, if there's something specific they're asking for, it'll, it'll be there, at least a, a Google link or whatever. So, yeah. I don't, know how, I don't know how people used to make comics when they had to. You didn't have Google. You couldn't email things. You had to, she had to ship the pages back and forth between colorist, letter, everybody. I don't know how any of them came out on time. And they were longer. I don't get yeah. it. I honestly don't understand how it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I don't know. It worked even harder, I guess, even longer hours. Yeah. Although I guess the art was different then. It wasn't, it was a little more expressive and less meticulous than, than people want nowadays, it seems. A little level of realism nowadays that most people want, in, especially in mainstream comics. Is, a little different than it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. If you got a call from DC asking you to do one of their games. Sure. Or you, who would I want to do? Or, or would I... What, what would be on your short list that you would... Frankenstein? I love DC's Frankenstein. Space Frankenstein. It's really cool. Um... I mean, Batman, obviously, like everybody likes Batman. I would love to draw Batman. I'm not a huge DC fan, but, you know, I love weirdos like Wild Dog I would do some, or the Demon. The Demon would be really cool. Any of Kirby stuff over there, the New God stuff would be really fun, too. Yeah, DC could call me any any time. I want to pit, pit them against each other, get a bidding war going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I certainly grew up a Marvel, a Marvel head, so I'm, I'm happy there. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Just call it. Uh, sure, if you'd like. <laughs> it's up to you guys. Anybody has any more questions or anything? Yeah, any other questions? Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other fun stories about stuff that happened. Not really. It's mostly just sitting in a room by yourself. <laughs> Uh, I had a Chris Burnham story from sitting at his table. He was sitting and, and signing comics once, and he's talking to the guy, blah, 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 and I'm watching him sign, and he usually signs Burnham, exclamation point. And while he's talking to this guy, I watch, and he just starts writing Batman, exclamation point, and does it on like three or four <laughs> issues. And I said, hey, man, do you, do you realize you wrote Batman on all those? And he had no idea he was doing oh, wow. it. He just started signing him Batman. Amazing. That was fun. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you don't have to come in. I do that to you. <coughs> what's uh, what's uh, your most favorite con you've been at so far? This is pretty cool. I like it. Tr treated well, and it's cool to be right by the falls and stuff. But I, I, I don't know if it's as much about the con as, as the, the people that go to it. And the city, I love C2E2, I love Chicago, and it's one of the shows that I've gone to a bunch and kind of know, the same kind of, same group of people usually do that show, a lot of East Coast guys, and a lot of guys I've gotten to be friends with, so I always like that show, and it's, you know, Chicago, Chicago's such a fun city, and great Eaton town and stuff, so that's probably my favorite show that I've done repeatedly, I did Heroes Con one year, that was super fun okay. too, so... <clears throat> I don't know. There's so many of them. I'm like trying to trying to check out as many as I can. Well, and I got a passport now to come to this, so maybe hopefully I'll be nice. doing some more uh, Canadian shows. Everyone keeps t telling me how good Fan Expo is. So that was not it. bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. Well, it's, it's okay. fun. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Um, what's the other ones? There's another show. I keep hearing people tell me to do. Baltimore, I think it is. Okay. But I think that's the same weekend as another show. It might be. Oh no no Baltimore Comic Con, like yeah like Baltimore Comic Con proper. I think that's the actual name of it. 
It's been around for years, but I want to say it's the same. It's the same time as some other show. I don't know. They all blur together. Yeah. <laughs> There's a really cool show in Columbus, Ohio, that I've done a few times called CXC Cartoons Crossroads Columbus, and it's kind of a small press show, but they also they get like. You know, Steve Lieber was there one year, and Brandon Graham, but then they and Sergio Argonis, and 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 a lot of small press people. And it's in a it's in a library, and it's free, and there's like a week long of programming and talks and and stuff like that. So it's kind of academic, but it's in a library, and it's very kid friendly and stuff. Oh, nice. And that's a really cool show too. We don't make any money at it, but <laughs> it's good. Yeah. But I'll certainly come back here. I'm really enjoying this. That's it's a good. good show. That's cool. Yeah. It's really a ton of people down there, too. It's been nice and busy today. It's good. You gotten to talk to any of the other artists down there? I've been talking to John McRae pretty pretty regularly. He's sitting right next to me, and we hung out last night a little bit, and John Lehman. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, It's. It, I don't really... Looking at the guest list of the show, there wasn't anybody I really had a previous friendship with, but... By now, I, I know most comics folks are pretty nice, so yeah, and, and it's it's pretty easy to, to get to talk to them. I'm glad I got to sit next to John because he's a he's a he's a good easygoing guy, and I think we both have a similar attitude about about it. There's some guys, there's some artists and stuff, and and writers who get a little full of themselves and, and start believing their own hype, and it's just like you're you're sitting in a room making marks on paper just like I am like it's not I don't know why you think you're so so (laughs) special but that's also growing up in Ohio that's just kind of the the mentality the kind of like downplay everything I have a friend who who uh, moved to Ohio from he lived in Georgia and he lived in Oakland and he was one day he's like man what is with you guys like why can't you just be happy when something when someone has something good happen <laughs> like i don't know i don't know why like and no one's allowed to like show that they're pleased with what they did it's like braggadocious or something <laughs> like that and it just infects everything i guess so how about we wait till it's over wait you got you got 6 minutes no, you can have another hug if you want. <laughs> what comic do you think I should draw? Um, oh, Adventure Time. I would love to yeah. do something with Adventure Time. That's it's a really great, yeah, great show. Yeah, my daughter was into that one. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Best show ever on television, period, I think. Are you familiar with uh, Spider, Spider-Man and Gwenpool? Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought of... Trying to get on them. So yeah. Spider Man Deadpool. Yeah, that, yeah. Why don't they do that? That's a good idea. I should pitch it to them. Have you seen that? I mean, is that our style similar? I haven't, I haven't actually seen any of yours. Is that our style similar to yours? Or is that uh, yeah. Style? Yeah, I think I'm a little on the, I'm a little on the cartoony side. I'm not super, super realistic and gritty, so I, it would certainly fit for me. Yeah, why are they. I just they should have canceled Spider Man Deadpool and launched Spider Gwen Gwenpool. It would have been. I finished the first run of Spider Gwen. Yeah. And I liked how they finished that off. I had to now download the second one. Yeah, yeah. I haven't read that much Spider Gwen. Gwenpool shows up in Spider Man Deadpool a few times, so I drew her already a couple of times. I like that the meta ness of that character kind I like of the meta ness of Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then I like I, it. I think Raw Round was perfect. Yeah. Oh. Well, spoilers, but we were uh, well. I won't be specific, but there was a big bad guy in in Spider Man Deadpool, and talking to the writer, he he desperately wanted the reveal of that character to be Ryan Reynolds, and they would they would let him do it, probably because they didn't want to deal with clearing. Are there them. any Ron Reynolds jokes in your in your panels or? No, no, because I was told that not that's one of the things they told me not to do. Like, yeah, I know. Well, I gues they keep them separate. I, did, I, did those five all the time. I know, I know. I, it would have been perfect and it, it would fit in, like you said, the meta ness of it. Yeah, so I don't know. It's one of those things they that the lawyers probably don't want to, they don't want to deal with clearing his likeness even though he probably wouldn't even care at all but maybe his agent would care who knows you know he would, he would, he would like say i don't know why you're asking me I right would say yes. right <laughs> and would 
help promote the book and everything. But I don't know that that that's one of the frustrating things about Marvel or Disney, actually. You know, is that there's all this there's all this f- corporate framework that is still like governing a lot of what happens. Like even talking to uh, Marvel editorial, some of the editors and stuff like talking about stuff, you get the feeling like, yeah, we didn't want to do that either, but our hands were tied. This is what we were, we had to do. So that's the way we did it. So it's tough, but that's, you know, it's corporate America you make decisions. Yeah. Not because it makes the best book, but because, because, because who knows why? <laughs> because of lawyers. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It would have been cool to make it Ryan Reynolds. That would have been so great. Right. Say lovey. I, I just want to say that I think you, I'm a big Spider-Man guy and I think you do a, a fantastic job on him. Thank you. Yeah, I would love to do I would love to do some more Spider-Man stuff. It would be cool to draw a Spider-Man proper. Not that I didn't draw the real Spider-Man, but I mean in, in a Spider-Man solo title or something. Although, those damn webs on his costume. <laughs> like It would always be the last thing I'd draw on a page and I'd always be like, oh, the webs. <laughs> like, I was just thinking I'm done and past it. I'm like, oh, i got to go do all these <laughs> webs. Miles Morales Spider-Man. Well, that's... Spider-Man. Well, yeah, but that's got the reversed webs, which are even more time-consuming, like the white-on-black webs, where you could do, you can draw it and, like, put it on the colors and be like, what do they call Invert, you know? You invert the black lines on the white to white-on-black, but my crazy, obsessive mind would, would individually... So each, each line and, and web... Instead of drawing one, one, you draw one, one, one. You have to draw each side of it, you know, so it can be filled with red each time. And then fill the black in between. So that would, no. Black suit, Secret Wars, black suit, classic black suit, Spider-Man, that's the way to go. Yeah, the Venom suit. That's the way to go. That's that's the real, that's the real money. Yeah, that one is a little more. That's true. That one is a little more stripped down. I'd love to. That Miles Morales is a great character too. I'd love to do something with that character. Um. <laughs> is it four o'clock? Yeah, it's four-ish. Oh, one more minute. Oh, one more minute. Yes. Did you talk about Major X by chance? Sorry, I'm late. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you followed what happened on the, I did. the Twitter. I apologized when you explained. Oh, he didn't apologize. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. Seems like it. No, I maybe I should go back and look at it again, but I don't remember. He didn't actually say I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Maybe that. No, no. He well, he called it a clown move and stuff, and then I responded and said, "Hey, I was, you know, I don't know when these were coming out. I, you, you know." You were extremely professional about it. Thank you. You're, thanks. I mean, you, you sounded like a Canadian. Coming <laughs> <laughs> as an American, I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely, I, it certainly crossed my mind to be like, all right, let's, let's do this then, and like really like milk it and, and really get people riled up about it. But that's not really my nature. <laughs> Plus, yeah, it, it, Twitter is a, a, a minefield anyway, and. One uh, advice I give to people that want to work in comics all the time is don't be a jerk online. There's n- there's literally no reason for it. It's only going to hurt you in the long run. That's just a job market at all today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't understand why. Lawyers are looking at your social media saying, how are they going to represent us? Sure. That's what they tweet. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, whether they agree with it or not or whether people think or whether you're right or wrong, it's just there's no... It doesn't serve any purpose except to upset people, unless that's the purpose you're trying to, <laughs> unless that's why you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but I don't know. What's the story, Rob? You don't like me anymore? Just put that out there in the world. No, I, I, it's fine. It, it, it is what it is. I, I, I know how Rob is, and I, you know, I worked with him in, the, in my first book, and, and you know. I knew it was a chance that, that if you're in Rob's orbit, you could be smashed to bits at any time. <laughs> yes? Are you going to say something? I don't know if that camera's running, but I did. I just said it. <laughs> Love you, Rob, but we're going to have to have it out. 
Ain't no clown, man. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, I'm sure everyone here appreciates you being here today. It was great meeting you and hearing your start. Thank you. Thanks for all the questions, everybody. No problem. Good job, Leon.